Good afternoon, everyone in YouTube land. My name is Jared, and this is my channel, Mazda B3K. Welcome to part two of the engine removal and reinstallation on this 1995 Gulfstream Sunsport RV behind me. Part one, we got the engine isolated. Part two, we're going to isolate the transmission and then pull out the old engine. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome, boys and girls, to the transmission. It's a big stinker. It is a 4L80E workhorse transmission of this era for GM. That's a three-speed with an overdrive. Computer-controlled, first of its kind to do that. Replace the Turbo 400, among others. And we got to get this big old booger separated from the back of our engine. First thing we gotta do is we're gonna have to get the fluid out of it. I don't, unfortunately, I don't think there is a drain bolt on the pan, so we're gonna have to do this the hard way. Which is, you get a pan, you start loosening these bolts and then you basically let the pan open up at one side and let it waterfall your fluid into your pan and then after that we got to separate this the drive shaft this is a bolt-on type so it doesn't it's not a slide yoke it's bolted on right here like a, a pinion is and so we'll unbolt that knock her loose and uh i'll take care of that the electronics are already disconnected from getting harness stuff out of the way on the engine. Uh, after that, we're gonna disconnect this cross member, transmission support cross member that runs across. We gotta get that out of the way so that we can properly position our transmission jack to catch this monster. And then the very last thing we'll do is we'll move up inside the RV and then a couple spots kind of down and around and we will take out the bell housing bolts. And once that happens, the transmission needs to be supported. Otherwise, you're going to damage the uh, input shaft. That's when we need to have our transmission jack ready to go. And then we'll then comes the real fun part. We got to kind of shimmy wiggle the thing backward until uh, you have it free of the engine. And that'll be. Well, that'll be what I'm doing today. Um, it's good. We're not fully set up for the engine removal yet. That's going to be real barrel monkeys. Anyway, now that I've blathered on all that, um, let's see. Eyeballing it, I'm going to say that's a 9 16th. So let me go get the appropriate tooling and we will get started. Don't know if this is standard, but you see that bolt right there? Doesn't appear to have a washer or anything on it in the middle and the back. That's a 9 16 so All the guys around it are actually one half. So, again, don't know if that was somebody doing a repair or not, but just be aware. As you can see, I've got a power tool and I'm just kind of working my way. I decided to go after this guy. He's in a tight spot. I'm gonna use a gonna use a this guy. Flexi 916ths and hopefully that'll get the job done. So we're aiming for a little something like this. I've had this thing's been dripping everywhere, but I finally got enough of the rear bolts loose that it's starting to come down here, as you can see. In the back, I got a pan in position. Try to avoid as much mess as I can. Fluid is a dark red, so it's got some use on it, but I'm not seeing anything particularly scary at the moment. All right, let's see what we have. So we can see this fluid is dark. It, there are definitely, there's particulate in here. I apologize for that reflection there. It's just there's enough fluid in here to cause that. And this is our magnet, and it appears to be quite covered, so... This fluid definitely had some age on it and it did need to be changed. 
And, you know, I'll clean this up. We're going to switch from a cork gasket, which is what this is, to a rubber one. And, um, yeah. So, for the here and now, I clean all this up. Wipe the magnet clean, get the pan clean. And then I'm actually going to stick it back on there temporarily because that protects the insides of the transmission from getting dirty and whatnot. And then I'll continue on with getting the transmission disconnected. Alrighty, so this is our pan all cleaned up. Oh, forgot to put the magnet back in there go so definitely used but nothing scary i don't see like chunks of clutch pack material in here so i'd say that transmission's probably still okay got some life in it um like i said gonna just bolt this back up just put a few bolts in put the rest in a safe place and uh keep going all right so did some peeking here you got four of them had to dig them out these are 7 sixteenths, and they are set up as such. Can't really get at them with a, uh, with a socket. So I'm using my flexi wrench here. There are four of them. They're going to, when you get them out, there's a cap right here that comes out. And keep your head clear when you get number four out, because I'm not quite sure how the drive shaft falls out. But I don't want anybody getting smacked with it. And as you saw, the drive shaft is going to move around a little bit. So um, you don't want this in neutral. You want it in some, some kind of a drive gear so that you can eventually get some tension and, you know, pop this loose. Welcome to the carrier bearing. So took a look after I got the caps off and this thing, the only way it comes out is backwards. And currently there is no slack. We need to make slack. To create slack, we need to take the carrier bearing loose, possibly not all the way off, but we at least have to make it loose. I think these are five eighths. They are not five eighths. I am sad. I'm gonna have to get something bigger, but there are two nuts, one on each side. This one's inside of a weird shield. I don't know why. Then there's a bolt head on the other side here. Probably gonna need to put something on it to keep it from spinning. And then take these out. This will begin to droop. And as it droops, geometry says that this is gonna wanna come back. If we get it to come back enough, then we can get the dry shaft to come down. Let me go do that. Okay, so carrier bearings down. Turned out that these were an 11 16th, the nut, but then the bolt head was a 5 8 So go figure, why can't we make them match? That would give us all the nice things. But once I did that, sure enough, that gave me what I need to get the drive shaft out. I went ahead and put the caps back on so I don't lose the pieces. And you may be screaming, but now you've got pressure there and sag here. What I'm gonna do here in a second is go get a jack stand and put a jack stand right over here. And uh, that should let me keep this out of the way over here because I need this out of the way so that I can roll in the transmission jack where I'm at. And so the transmission jack will have room to come back and the transmission can come back. It's actually gonna have to come down a little bit because the, the clearance there. But it'll droop once the crossbar is out of the way. So that's done. One thing I totally had forgotten about is we need to disconnect the cooler lines, which are up there. For that, I'll have to go get my flare wrenches out. I'm going to guess it's going to be like 5 8 and 11 16 on those. But that's the next thing we go after. And then we got to disassemble this cross member. And finally, at that point, we can go ahead and we'll get our transmission jack wheeled in here. And ugh, start working on this. But this is actually 
for as much as this RV hates my guts and I hate its guts, this is going okay. All right, guys, this is what I wound up having to do. So there's your transmission lines, right? They're rounded out. They ain't going anywhere. But what they go to, I was able to disconnect. So what they had done in this case is a custom setup. They had one going in the, the uh, radiator as normal. But then the bottom line, what they had done is they had added an additional, it's mounted up front, but an additional uh, cooler. So they had jammed <laughs> the uh, tube nut into this, uh, clamped down on it, and I guess by some miracle it didn't leak, and that's where the other one was going. So I've got them both free now. So you got one here, one there, and so now when I need to pull the transmission back, it's going to be a little bit more annoying, but these will go back with it. So in that way, I don't have to fool with getting real frisky with those lines, anything like that. And we can still just keep doing what we need to do. We'll reconnect this stuff up front when we need to. And so we're good. Those other two lines, by the way, I was being a derp. Those are fuel lines and they do need to come off because there's a stretch of hard line that runs from the TV unit to there. It's got to come out. And to get those off, it was you need a three quarter to offset and a what was it? It was a five eighths tube nut. And you know, you pull one way with the three quarter, you push the other way with the five eighths, and pop, they pop apart. Uh beware of fuel spilling. But I need to disconnect that because I gotta disconnect that up there. Um that's done so now we're on to the cross member all righty folks cross beam dun 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 all right this thing is set up kind of interesting it's got a support bracket this lower piece here and then the upper piece is actually this big u shape that goes across and the u its bolts go in at the top there so you can see so what we want to do first is take out this support bracket. Um, these are 9 sixteenths right here. I'm pretty sure this is a 9 sixteenths bolt head. So you need that. This is an 11 sixteenths. So probably an 11 sixteenths bolt head up over there. But what I, my theory is we take that out and we take these two out. Where's the other one? We can wiggle this out. We can wiggle the other one out over there. And then when we start taking out the, um, the top, it will come down, right? And by coming down, if I have my transmission jack right here, holding the pan, that will let this drop. Um, what I'll probably also do is this is for your transmission uh, mount right here. I don't know if there are some other bolts that are, you know, holding them out to the transmission, but take this out. This will let this whole thing drop and then we can get it out of the way. And then, you know, if we need to lower the transmission jack, move it around for better positioning, we still can because we're still bolted to the block and the block is still bolted to the motor mounts, which are bolted to the big K frame up there. Um, or maybe we're happy with what we got, but that's my general plan here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. And you can also see I did, I got the fuel lines out. And what's important here is I'm at an angle a little bit because we're up on jack stands, right? So as long as I keep the tops of the fuel lines above the level of the fuel tank, gas won't come flying out. But if you get if the tip of this hose gets below the tank below the actual fuel level in the tank it'll create what's called a gravity siphon and it's going to start just peeing fuel until that fuel level gets equal to the the fluid in the tank so come up with a way to keep it above you'll be... all right and there we go 
so what that also does is it gives you let me just slide around gives you a lot better access to the actual cross beam bolts right there once you get this lower support bracket out of the way but that went about how i thought it would go um the bolt heads on these are 5 8 not 11 16 so make sure you have a 5 8 wrench so now we get to do the fun one because uh, there's exhaust there and if i'm talking a little loud sorry got earplugs in i'm using impact tools and i value my hearing so Anyway, we're going to do that one, and then I'll go get the transmission jack, and we'll go from there. All right, folks, updates. So as you can see, a little hard to tell, but got the two top bolts out. It was not very fun. What I had to do on the exhaust side is above the frame rail up there, I took a breaker bar and a 5 8 and I used that to break the bolt loose to where it would spin, even, you know, spin the nut. And then I would lock the top with the breaker bar and then I took an 11 16 and I cranked inside of here. And it was not fun, but that worked. I got it out. The other side should be easier because there is no exhaust and no oxygen sensor in your way. So, uh, other side, you might even be able to get a power tool on it. But when I did that, it did, the whole cross member did drop on one side, as you may see. Transmission jack is in position. just the kind of hold things it's not i don't have the safety chain or anything in place because i haven't disconnected it from the uh bell housing but i have it here so that i can try to pry this cross member out when i get the other two bolts out and there we are there's our cross beam so at this point the jack is not taking all the weight but it's taking some that allowed this to drop down. You're gonna to have to kind of spin it and contort it to get it to where it'll come out, but get it out. As you can see, I've put all the bolts back, so they're not gonna get lost. So I am done for today. It's getting dark, and I don't wanna be wiggling a transmission in the dark. I will save that for tomorrow, but uh, good progress today. So one other thing I noticed that we're going to need to do is the parking brake. Either I need to give it enough slack so I can just leave it attached and then when I slide the transmission back. Or I'm going to have to disconnect it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll figure that out tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Today is a new day. I went ahead. I took a look at the parking brake. And it would be a massive pain in the butt to try to actually get it out of the drum. So I just loosened up all the little tacks that held it along the frame rail and stuff to try to get enough slack, and I hope it's enough. If not, I'll revisit. And I also realized I need to get the shift linkage. So looking down from the access hole here, uh, there's two little bolts right there. Uh, let's see. You can see them there. Sorry about the lighting. And then further down... We're going to have to pull that too, but it looks like there's a cotter pin down there we can pull. And we'll access that from the concrete. But uh, I think these are maybe a 3 8 So 3 8 here on the top. We'll get to that cotter pin at the bottom. That should get the shift linkage free of the transmission. And then I think we'll be ready to start taking off bell housing bolts. Alrighty, folks. It took much fighting, but as you can see, there's the shift linkage. I wound up kind of tucking it away under here. So that's the actual shifter part that links up with the shift selector on the transmission. That was a 15 millimeter nut. It was easier to take that off, take off the two one half nuts that were 
there and there and just pull the whole thing loose and out of the way because I tried pulling the pin that was a pain I tried to disconnect these little dudes and what I found out is these are Allen's but I couldn't see that I couldn't find the right one so I just worked around it all right so bell housing bolts as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, and then I think we have a five and a six down on the shoulder um, that we'll have to access from the underside. But uh, that's where we are. I believe they are all nine sixteenths, so use combination of socket and wrench. Get these out. Do take a note of what goes where, because some of these are studs, as you can see. And then if you look over here, see that guy right there? He's just a regular bolt, so take note. And after that comes the scariest part, where we uh, use the safety chain and we strap down the transmission, and then we got to actually wiggle it off the back of the engine, which that's always fun. So, one thing I forgot about, I've got the bell housing bolts out, but I want to make sure that the torque converter comes off with the transmission. And currently, it's bolted to the flex plate, as you can see here. So, we need to unbolt it. It does look like 5 uh, 8s. So, what we'll have to do is get to the ones we can get to, then you have to go to the front of the engine and uh, bar it over spin the whole assembly which should be easy because there's no compression because the spark plugs are out uh nope nope i still see spark plugs i did not pull them anyway you gotta bar it over and just keep barring it over get all the bolts until they're out i think there are six i want to say so we'll get these out and then then I'll try wiggling on the transmission, but I am not the biggest of dudes, and I may not be able to get this thing out, but that's the next step. Good morning, everyone. Today is a new day. As you can see, we have some progress here. The transmission is now separated from the back of the engine. The uh, alignment pins had gotten stuck, so what we wound up having to do is actually run a toe strap all the way down the back and uh, give it a little love tap, a little tug with my tractor and that popped it loose. So and that's really, that's about all we're going to need. We may need a hair more as the, as the uh, engine comes up on the crane as we work on that, but pretty much that's all the, all the separation you need. So that is done which means I need to go up front, take care of the power steering pump, finish getting it out of the way. There's an accessory bracket that needs to be removed. And then we'll go top side and I need to remove the TBI assembly. And after that, the engine is ready to be fitted to the crane and lifted. All right, so TBI assembly out. You have three primary bolts. They're all one half. Two of these are actually studs because you put studs in on top when you put the actual air hat on. But you also need to keep in mind you have multiple vacuum lines that have to be pulled. Got to pull that. And then you're going to have your cruise linkage and your throttle linkage. Both of those have to be pulled. Be mindful you don't lose these little end clips. You know, one of those things that you lose it and then you can't find it. You got to order it in. Super annoying. And if you're doing this process, like this gasket's probably okay for reuse, but maybe you'll have to get a new one. Maybe not, you might need adapters. You just need to check to see how you're doing this, whether or not you'll need it. But this is out of the way. We're not gonna try to transfer this for because reasons. Otherwise, we're good to go here. So now going to that guy looks like where I left it. There's a couple of worm clamps that need to come off. So I think that's an eight millimeter. I'll wrestle with it, see if I can get it off. All right, updates. So I had to take throttle bracket off. 
9 16 is not a big deal um, we've got the transmission backed out further as you can now see the flex plate is clearly visible down there so engine is entirely separate from transmission as you can also see i've got this engine leveler hooked up i've found some places on the intake where I've either lifted nuts or entire bolts, got them in nice and tight. So hopefully we have, you know, pitch control, forward, backward control is kind of what we're aiming for. I don't think it's going to wind up that way, but we shall see. So at this point, as you can see, chains are under tension. Um, I'm going to go down below, get everything kitted up and pull the motor mount bolts and once those bolts are out that's it uh, the crane will be supporting the engine and we'll start carefully lifting it up and see what we get okay so one last thing that I noticed uh, after getting the motor mount bolts out which by the way those the head is a 9 16 the nut is an 11 16 and or sorry, head is a 5 8 nuts and 11 16 and they're sticky. You're probably going to need to get a breaker bar to get it broken loose so it can actually move. And then you're going to need a helper or something to lock down one side. And then with the other side, I used an impact right there, got it out. And since I had the engine under load from the crane, bolts came out nice and easy. But to avoid taking off a bunch of stuff by the driver's motor mount, I went ahead and disconnected what I now know are oil cooler lines right here. That turned out to be a 22 millimeter put right there. And it was a three quarter on the other side and the other sides up there. That's the side that actually turns. This is just here so you can break it loose. Now with all that done and these oil lines up and out of the way, I checked everything, that should be it. We should now begin to be able to lift this guy up and see if we can't get it out of its hole. First time since it's probably built. Here we go. All right, so for clearance purposes, the bracket for, this is air conditioning, I believe. It is this guy right here. I just had to take that off, 9 16 nut. But give her a greater view here, look at that. They said it couldn't be done. They said it shouldn't be done. And I may agree with the latter. We're doing it. So engine is coming up and out. We're looking pretty good. We're a little concerned about the water net contacting this edge of the doghouse. But we're going to see if we can't roll it back, sneak it out. But everything's looking pretty good so far. So, All right. So here's where we sit after a lot of maneuvering and a lot of swearing stuff that I can't film because then I couldn't monetize this video. Uh, we had to take the handrail off because we had, my brother had built this, uh, basically this false floor when we were going to try to get this to line up with the original floor, but we realized that wasn't going to work. So I explained earlier, had to make a false floor that lined up the doghouse floor. So we had to rig up a solution real quick, which is what this is. But everything worked out. We've got the engine sitting just about as far forward as you can get it. Got it braced with this, so it's sitting pretty happy. Leaving the leveler attached. And now we got to take the crane, get it out that door, and then set it down. And then we got to do a bunch of clearing work. And then the crane is going to wind up in the bed of a truck, which will then come around to where I'm standing. And it's gonna get weird, but we're gonna scooch in with the crane in the back of the truck. And we're gonna pick the engine back up and we will bring it forward. And that's how we're going to try to transfer this into something that can move. So then we can finally put the engine somewhere. And it may just hang out in the back of a truck until we can take it to the dump. But that's how old one's going to come out and then the reverse is how it's going to go back in when we get the new engine we'll get it as prepped as we can basically like this one so unfortunately we can't because of maneuverings we can't like put the brackets and stuff on it so 
we'll have it about like this and then we'll do the reverse of what we just did swing it around get it down the hole get the motor mounts in and um, then i gotta put it all back together while we can fire it by the way if you wanted to work on your hydro boost and your brake master this is the time to do it once you get the engine out because you've got all sorts of room to uh, come in here and work on it so my seat is atrocious i'm probably going to throw down a towel or something so that i don't get absolutely disgustingly filthy but you know now is the time this is also a great opportunity if you've got weird wiring that you need to work on through here. Now's the time. Straighten up wires, bundle wires. There's these little blower fans that don't work, you know, stuff like that. But my focus today probably is going to be, well, maybe tomorrow, is replacing the old master, which is right there. You can see the brake reservoir. And then you can see it is connected to the hydro boost, right? So I've got all the parts I need to replace that. It's going to get replaced. And then I'm going to be kind of sourcing probably power steering lines and things like that. They need to be replaced as well. It's going to be a couple of trips to the part house to get this all sorted out. But sorted out it will be. So that when we put all this back together and bump the key, it fires right off and all the key stuff works and this RV can move around the yard and go to its hole. All right, guys, as you can see, engine is out. This is how we did it. She saw we had left it sitting here on this temporary floor, right? So we figured out that we needed to have the crane on the ground so we could come in close enough to the door for everything to reach. So we laid down some scrap wood, laid this down, put the crane on the plywood, pushed it in so the wheels were on the concrete. That got us the amount of in we needed, but then we were running into clearance issues with the top of the door. And we took care of that by getting it in the air. And then we can move this temporary piece of plywood, which then gave us all this extra space so we were able to go down, which allowed us to keep the crane arm from hitting the top of the door. And then we just kind of worked it back. So now what we're gonna do, since the engine's out, we're gonna put it down here. We're gonna move the crane back over to the concrete near the engine stand. I'm gonna take my tractor, come around, we'll pick up the engine with the tractor then take it back around and we'll set it down in a happy place on the concrete and then we're going to put the crane back on it so that way I can rob parts off this thing as needed to prep the new block. This has been a pretty involved process but there you go ladies and gentlemen I may be the only person who's filmed it thus far ever but that is how you get a 454 out of a Gulf stream sunsport through the freaking front door and out to where you can actually work on it and manipulate it and the good news about this is the way that we're taking it out it can be reversed we can use the tractor to bring the prepared engine around here and then we can get the crane in position and then we can move the crane back up over here and we can sneak it in and then you know everything that we just did to pull it out we can put it back in over here and we know that once the engine is back over here that i can clean up all that right there and we can do geometry things and we can get this engine back down in its hole so really the most important thing about this whole process is we now have a process that will work it is not fun and it's very involved but it will work